Laura mentioned a while ago premarital sex, and I think that's also another issue that um, the young people now, uh, sorry, like the young people, okay, <laughs> the young people now deal with when they try to say, oh, it's okay, no one's getting hurt. Um, God's gonna forgive us anyway. There's grace for this. And what do you think about that? Again, it's very relative. <laughs> <laughs> well, for them it is. But mm. the way God has designed intimacy mm. and sex and it being in marriage, there are actually um, good safeguards to why it was meant to be in marriage. Like, for example, um, when, when sex happens, you know that, you know, in, in your brain, right, you get like this imprint. And it makes you physically and emotionally attached to this person that you have intercourse with. It's mm-hmm. like the glue that physically and emotionally ties you guys together. Mm-hmm. That's why um, young people, let's say, who've had premarital sex with someone, parang sinasabi nila, ang hirap iwanan. Yeah. <laughs> right? They have yeah. comments like that. It's so hard to leave him. Or like, let's say they broke up and they just feel like they're so empty on the inside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you've basically gone through the whole process of literally gluing yourselves together. And yeah. there is a physical change in the brain when that happens. Mm-hmm. You know, there's mm-hmm. a literal, literal physical imprint in how you're attached to that person. That's why sex was meant to be something within marriage because it's the very thing that kind of you know yeah. binds the wife and the husband together, literally mm-hmm. <laughs> as well. Yeah. And it's beautiful if you think about it. It's such a cliche way, and I think it's beautiful. <laughs> it's such a cliche way to say it, but it is. Yeah. I mean, well. You can think of it as like you know how God has set boundaries that are reflect that reflect ancient ways. Yeah. Okay. So um, the safeguard of marriage and you know sex and everything that's also an ancient way that God has designed romance. Yeah. It's not old fashioned to say that sex should only happen after you say I do. No, that's actually incredibly ancient. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not just old fashioned and it's ancient, but it's kind of like in these ancient ways that God allows romance to be blessed. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like physics. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. So there's yeah. a God-designed physics to romance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And one of it is, you know, keeping yourself pure for that person that you are meant to be with for the rest of your life. Um, another thing is with boundaries. Um, mm-hmm. You know how, like, it's good for you not to stick a knife into a socket yeah, and, yeah, like, yeah. die? <laughs> you know? It's kind <laughs> of like that. Or you know how it's good for you that you look both ways before crossing the street? Mm. Yes. Those are certain boundaries that weren't meant to limit you. Those are certain boundaries that were meant to give you freedom. To literally yes. save your life. Yeah, to yes. save your life and to give you yeah. freedom to do more in the long run. Yeah. So when yeah. people say, you know, hey, sex before marriage is so limiting. No, it's actually something that would give you more freedom as you hold on to it. Mm-hmm. What limits mm-hmm. you is actually when you give of yourself before marriage and then, you know, the consequences, you know, broken hearts, yeah, yeah. broken yeah. things. No, yeah. no, actually that's true. Yeah. Like there's just, there's just this statistic that says that people who engage in multiple hookups or many partners, sexual mm-hmm. partners, they they have a higher tendency to like encounter things like depression, suicide. Because okay. like you said, it's when you have multiple sexual partners, it's basically dividing yourself into many bits. Yes. Yeah. And so giving parts of yourself. Yeah, away. and it, and it's yeah. and, and and they say it's a it's a root cause for many mental illnesses as well, especially if you're young. Yeah. Mm. But a, a lot of people use the excuse that oh, it's our it's our primal instinct, it's our yes. basic instinct. Yeah. Um, the animals, uh, the, the animals, they they do whatever they want and everything. But mm. then of course. We're special, right? We're we're supposed to be separate from the animals. God yeah. made us, gave us dominion over all things on earth, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. He died for He died for us as human beings. And yeah. so I think we have this um, not naman duty, but like there's this need to just be elevated above uh, above that, above the animal instinct. Being yeah. a being a Christian is basically self. It's 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 all about self control as well. Mm-hmm. It's about mm-hmm. obedience. Yeah, and I think that's one word that we have forgotten that word of obedience Mm -hmm. because obedience implies that we follow something that we follow what the bible says that we follow what god says if we look at the steadfastness of the bible you know if we believe that the bible is true that it doesn't change you know that it's it has authority like from even way back to now then uh, then this is something that that uh, should should mark us Mm -hmm. so one good question to ask is is the bible relative um has god's word changed in its authority since way back 
to now? I mean, it, or is it the same? Nicole mentioned something about the ancient ways of God, the, the ways of Olam. And uh, this is something that we have to, to look at closely. What does the Bible say about these ancient ways or these ancient paths? And what happens when we decide to follow them versus following that anything goes? Like just because I want to do sex, for example, mm. you know, just because I want to have sex, for example, before marriage, what benefit is there with sticking to God's ancient ways? Here, something we can look at is found in Jeremiah. Jeremiah 6, 6 verse 16. It says, This is what the Lord says Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Now, the crossroads, that usually it's a symbol for decision making, mm -hmm. right? Like, where do I go? Okay, do I do this? Do I go to this lane? Do I go to this path? Where do I go? Okay, ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it and you will find rest for your souls so when we have a decision to make one good thing to ask is lord where is the good way okay where do i walk in such a way that i will find rest for my soul and the the ways of god are actually found here a lot of people say that the old testament is not important anymore especially because jesus came already and because he came it's like he he did away with the old testament what do you think about that i think the fact that there is still an old testament basically yeah. just and tells you that you still need it it already has jesus in it yes it so, does you know you have pictures and images of what jesus was meant to be in the old testament itself you see facets of him that's already been there and the prophecies about him are there. Right. So it's like you can't really appreciate how those prophecies came true in the New Testament if you don't have the Old Testament backing you up for that. You know how powerful the Word of God is and how God himself said that, hey, not one little letter is going to uh, disappear before uh, everything comes true. So Matthew 5, 18. Here, this is Jesus' words. I'll start with 17, verse 17. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. So the things that the Lord uh, gave to Moses in the Torah, you know, these are still things that are important. I notice of the generation now, uh, we would usually say, oh, there's grace for this. There's grace for sin. Like we, we sin and sin and sin and say, oh, it's going to be okay because Jesus will <laughs> forgive us anyway. I mean, yeah. hear that from a lot of Christians, that? right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of people use an excuse. I'm, I'm already forgiven. I'm already, I already have Jesus in my heart. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, there's a fine line between loving God and fearing Him as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Of, like yeah. reverence. Yeah, and I yeah. think I think if you truly do love God, you're gonna obey Him. Yeah. Like, yeah. Kahit like yeah, you, you know, we're still sinners. We still have slip ups and mistakes. Mm. But then, of course, if you love God, you'll make sure not to. You'll do your best not to repeat the same mistake, right? Yeah, yeah. you wouldn't take yeah. His sacrifice for granted. It's something yeah. that would have caused you you know a good amount of reverence mm -hmm. yeah to you know yield to him yeah exactly yeah that's true again that word obedience huh? yeah and the bible yeah. does say that if you love god you're gonna do his commands yeah. yeah like for example if you love someone you'll do anything for that person right yeah so what more god <laughs> yeah and if that person says no you know just here what more god what yeah. more god saying no just here mm -hmm. because he knows what's gonna happen if you go beyond the boundary yes if we say that god doesn't change and the bible does say that he is the same yesterday today and forever then uh, his word doesn't change too mm -hmm. they are as firm as steadfast you know as good as they were before you know we can we can practice them even now I think we can close with this one particular verse. It's a beautiful verse. Maybe I can ask Nicole to read it. It's uh, from Psalm 111. Uh, Psalm 111, verse 7 to 8. The work of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are steadfast forever and ever, done in faithfulness and uprightness. Yeah. The key word, steadfast. steadfast. 
mm-hmm. forever and ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like how oh God is just so blunt to that. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty absolute forever and ever. No, I think yeah. I think that helps. Like yeah. why are we mm. why why would we rely on a God that changes his mind every so often? Yeah. yeah. That's scary. Yeah. <laughs> I mean even in terms of his love for us, because a lot of times Christians they're like, Oh no, if I do this, if I sin, God might hate me. You know zap. Just, like they think he's just gonna zap them if he's angry. Yeah. No, no, no. If we had a God who was relative, who changed because of his moods or who changed because of any little thing and yeah, that would be horrible. That's a schizophrenic God, but yeah, we'll be we'd be extinct by now. That would yeah, be yeah, but we have a God who's firm and steadfast. Isn't there and a verse so for that? Is this word? Yeah. Yes, there if actually I, is. Like he says, I think it, I forgot where it was. I think it was mm-hmm. in the Old Testament. This is why okay. we shouldn't disregard the Old Testament. But I remember <laughs> he was saying something about like, um, like I'm God. I'm not like man. My, mm. I don't change my ma- my, my mind, mind the way yeah. a man does. God is. Yeah. Not man that he should like, yes, nor yes, the son yes. of man that he should change his mind. Yes. Yes. Like, like, yeah. yes, obviously God is a gracious and merciful God, but like as mm-hmm. Jesus told the devil in the wilderness, do not test the Lord your God yes. as well. Yeah. So like, yeah. it will be wise not to deliberately, you mm-hmm. know, rebel when you know that, you know, even, despite the fact that he, he will forgive you, kahit papano, but... Yeah, you know. there's there is repentance to the one who is really humble. yes. humbles himself yeah. and comes to the Lord and with a contrite heart, yeah, that's very really important. asking for mm-hmm. forgiveness. But uh, you know, if you're the type of person who keeps deliberately sinning and sinning or doing things that you know are wrong, and yet you keep telling yourself, "No, no, no," because God's gonna forgive me. God's gonna forgive me. Yeah, you might as well question if you are really someone who loves and obeys God. If mm-hmm. you are really someone who has said, "Yes, God, I give you my life," because someone who does that, someone who commits his life to God, will be someone who will be firm in his obedience and mm-hmm. will really want to um, love and please his master. Mm. Yeah. So I guess that's it. Yeah. So that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. Pretty beady. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that was um, good. yeah, tell you guys what, if you have any comments, any suggestions, do email us. Uh, you can find us at info at onevoicemagazine.com. You can send your emails there. Now you can find us on Facebook too, uh, onevoicemagazine.com. And um, yes, our website is onevoicemagazine. Dot com. So uh, find us there and we'd love to hear from you. Bye. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye. Stay safe. <laughs>